How are you doing, Push to Love family? Uh, this is Gabriel, the co-host. And I'm Angel, his special co-host as well. And we are Push to Love. We made this platform to bring awareness to spinal cord injury, love, and happiness in the process. Yes. All right, well, go ahead. All right, so as many of you may know, if you have been watching, if this is your first time listening or watching, we want to start off our podcast with just a fun conversation starter. We use the app Ultimate Intimacy. And so the question for today is, when we, um, what was the question? Oh my goodness. Our first kiss. What do you remember about our first kiss? Uh, you want me to go first or you want to go first? Let's go first. <laughs> so our first kiss. What I do remember, I don't remember, I don't remember the exact first kiss. I just remember we were in Miami and I was drunk that entire weekend. So I still had consent though. No, you had all, absolutely all the consent in the world. The pictures prove it. Like, <laughs> all I liked it and loved it. <laughs> but it wasn't the first night. I believe it was the oh. second day. We were, it hadn't been 24 hours, but we met back at the pool and we went up to the hotel room that they were staying at and somehow we just ended up kissing. Um, yeah. Follow us on Instagram. I'm going to be posting sometime this week the picture, one picture of us like cuddle up with each other. <laughs> First day. But what I do remember, I just had a... I would tell your kids. I, your mama was out here. Well, I was out Listen, yellow. She okay. shoot her shots. <laughs> and I got this, so I mean. <laughs> I forgot I don't have no girls. <laughs> I was like, no, yo, you don't you shoot don't no shots. You don't need you don't this. Shoot no you don't need no shots. You don't need no man. No, so I, I did a shoot my shot with you. I won. Uh, but what I remember about the first kiss, honestly, like I said, I was drunk. I don't remember much about it, but I do remember like confirmation from God that she... <laughs> don't bring God into this God is up in heaven like no I feel that was not that me that was not me yeah no nah, I just remember yeah I, it made me happy it did it made me like you gave me butterflies and you still really do I'm not gonna lie woke up this morning next to you and I rolled over I was like oh my god he's my husband like I had that moment with myself yeah, but yeah, you give me butterflies. How do you feel when you looking at me at night? Yeah, it's weird. I I like admire you while you're sleeping. It's kind of weird. Is I it don't weird? get to sleep much. Is that weird? Is that weird? Yes. I, do I feel like as women, when we have a good man, we appreciate him in all of his elements. And watching you sleep, it's a level of vulnerability. A lot of people. Have, like me, I can't sleep comfortable around people that I don't know or that I'm not comfortable with. Knowing that you can sleep as hard as you sleep and I'm laying next to you, oh, I eat it up. Mm, it's so good. <laughs> I feel it. Stop. Okay. <laughs> um, but no, our first kiss, yeah, it's kind of the same. Like it was, same for you? It was Miami. Yeah. I know I wasn't the only girl you kissed that weekend. Wow. <laughs> Y'all call me a Tatiana? Listen. I, we're going to be honest with our audience, are we not? First of all, I actually didn't kiss anyone else. Really? I, no, I don't think I did. Kissing is very intimate. It is. It is such an intimate it thing. Is. You can't just no. kiss anyone. And he had good teeth. So I was like... We could do this. Good teeth. Yeah, good teeth. I can't kiss I someone like with bad teeth. Like my teeth but good. just because you have gaps doesn't mean that you have bad teeth. Like What's your bad teeth? So for me, I don't like you. Don't have like yuck mouth, if that makes sense. I, so like your teeth just look here, like they yeah, they body. just they they sign language. They your teeth look they, like quadriplegic hands. <laughs> <laughs> I can 
say that. <laughs> Y'all can't laugh. If you laugh at that hole and you die a quadriplegic, you're a terrible person. If you're a para laughing at that, you're a terrible person. <laughs> but all my quadriplegics, we can laugh. That's like... I didn't you know, say that. The privilege. You laugh. But I married a quadriplegic, so I get some type of sex. So you're one of the people just because you have sex with a person of a certain race, ethnicity, or group that you can just be in? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Keep that same energy. <laughs> Keep that same energy. <laughs> we'll follow back or we'll, we'll double back on that eventually. Okay. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but yeah. But sir. Yeah, That's so. Fun. Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah, so it was easy to kiss him. And then you're a really good kisser. Like, over at them lips, you're a really good kisser. I've had a lot of practice. Oh, I know. <laughs> I think I, I started kissing way too young. Did you? Way too young. I was like. What was your first kiss age? Probably like five or six. Like first real kiss with another woman, not like not another woman, but another girl, not like an adult. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. My I first kiss. I was French and early too. I think my first kiss was like ten. Mm. Mm. He was out here. Eleven or twelve. Out here. Eleven or twelve. Out here. No, it wasn't like a real kiss. It was like a like a peck. You know. I didn't start French kissing like actual kissing until high school. Yeah, I'm, I was a little late. I was a late bloomer. Backyard, behind the garage. Her name was Ashley. Hi, Ashley. I think she lives in like Idaho right now. She had found me on Facebook like some years ago, way before you. I was friends with her brother Joey. Long story. All right. Well, we gonna end it there. <laughs> I don't know how we got down that chain. I don't know either. Just a little backstory. Um. Yeah. So you should. Gonna... You should. I'm a fighter. I, I think we're still friends. I'm a fighter, and, and you should her. message her and thank her because she helped me become a better kisser. I totally would do that. That's your terrible person. I would. Why not? She has helped evolve you into the husband that I have admired and adored every day for the past four months. Anyway. So <laughs> we're gonna segue into our topic. What are we today. talking about? So today we're going to get into the topic of taking care of the caregiver. And we find this to be very important because self-care is best care. And how can you pour into someone else when you, yourself, the caregiver, has such an empty cup? And I think me and Gabriel have gone through enough trial and error in the past four years for me to learn that I was absolutely the worst caregiver while my cup was empty. Um, was. You are. Are what? You are the absolute worst caregiver. I am not the worst caregiver. When your cup is empty, yes. Oh, when my cup is empty, absolutely. Yes, yes. 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 When my cup is empty, it's it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. I can't get because what you also have to understand in my the way I do things, not the way I do, but the way that my life is set up. I have a job that is technically a caregiver. Being a nurse is being a caregiver. Mm -hmm. And so you're pouring and pouring and pouring out during my 12-hour shift. And then I come home. And then I'm like, oh, tired, but I got to continue to pour. And then I'm pouring from an empty cup. So you're getting the absolute worst of me because I already gave everything that I had to everyone else. And I think this is a big lesson I need to learn even before we have kids. Because it's going to magnify the moment that little munchkins start running around. So, tell me how bad of a caregiver I was during nursing school. <laughs> I broke up with her. Yeah, he did. I broke up with her. But we ain't going to get into that. This is another story. Another time. Another time. But, like, it was, it's just, it was very taxing. And it is taxing. Like, I can always tell when you're there mm -hmm. and it's like it's draining on me because it's like bruh how did you let it because this is my thing like i always feel like you said it best like self-love is the best love mm -hmm. and no one can fill your cup better than you can fill your cup absolutely but what i will say is you struggled with that in the beginning of our relationship 
because it was like I felt like you were looking at me for all of your love, all of your affection, all of your conversation. Mm -hmm. Like, and I was like, nah, that's not, I'm not that guy. Yeah. I'm not that guy. Like, I remember, like, you would call me after work and every day or after school every day to be like, hey, I'm walking my car. That would then, actually work. I remember that. And I'm just sitting there like, all right, just tell me get in your car. All right, you want to talk? No, because you're about to be here. And then you don't want to talk. I know now I only got 15, 20 minutes left of silence. I need to, like, enjoy this. And you would get so upset. You would get butt hurt. And then you would come I'm home. Like, you wouldn't care. And then I would be ready to talk. But then now you shutting down because it's like, no. Nah. Like I wanted to talk then and you disrespected me and you didn't want to, you don't love me enough to even care if I'm okay. No, I do care if you're okay. I just don't care to talk to you because I know I had to talk to you for this much time and you don't work tomorrow. I need, I didn't get enough time. <laughs> so like I told you straight up, I was like, yo, you need to call your friends. You need to call your brothers. You need to call your uncles, your aunties. Because like, I need that, like, I need time. Like, if you want to just make, if you want me to just, like, be the man and be like, hey, make sure I'm okay, cool, be on the side of the phone. You good? I heard you open the door. You straight? All right, I'll talk to you later. See you when you get here. Quit. But you weren't okay with that. You want an actual conversation, which I get. I will give you that when you get home. <laughs> I feel like, for me... On the other end of the spectrum, yes, it was for, like, do you care that I made it to my car safely? Because I used to have to walk, and this is when I worked at Joe's. I would have to walk about maybe, like, um, three-fourths of, mm, like, a half a mile to my car. It's 8, 9 o'clock at night because I used to get out late every single day working there, which is why I left there. But um, it would be really late. I'd be by myself, and I'm walking. So I'm just like, okay, I want you know you to make sure I want you to know that I'm okay. Yes, one, two. It's like I would much rather just talk about this on my drive home, so when I get home, I can relax. But that wasn't. This is the thing. Okay, so relax. So think about it. You literally just said it. So you want to talk about all the stressful stuff on the phone, mm -hmm. and then when you get home, you want to just talk. No, relax is in like. So you, down. so you tell me you, when you came in the house, you want to try to have full-on conversations? No! <laughs> wow. Full-on conversations? If we didn't talk, yes, I'm going to have a full-on conversation No, with you. even when. Even when. Well, no, 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 no. I wouldn't have a full-on conversation. At that point, I would dump everything about my day on you on my drive home. And then when I get home, I go, so tell me about your day. Exactly. Then you <laughs> want to talk more. And I'm tired. I don't want <laughs> That's more so like me talking, she talking to me. I don't want to talk. I understand. So I we have to talk all day. So, so that's what we had to learn. We literally had to learn. Gabriel talks all day to people, to whoever he's talking to. You know, he's an entrepreneur, so he stays busy. He doesn't have a clock in and a clock out. So I totally get that. Whereas opposed to me, I'm talking to patients. But as I'm talking to patients, yes, I'm having side conversation because I love to get to know my patients. And this is when I was working in the adult world. But when I am talking, I'm always like, it's an intentional talk of like, okay, well, how are you doing? Great. No, no, no. You want this? You want cookies? You want not cookies, but you want crackers and apple juice to help with this? Okay, great. I bring it in. And then I do teaching on, well, let's talk about healthy snacks. Let's talk about snacks that you should avoid. Let's, and so if everything that I did talk about, it was very intentional. And I just wanted to have conversations. So I would come home with this, like, I just want to talk. I just want to talk. Like, let's talk about yeah. nothing, and I'm okay with it. No. And yeah, Or, not. like, tell me about your day. I want to hear about your day. And he's just like, I'm not that person. So it's, it took a while. So, yeah, like, that was that was tough. So then, like, having three, four days of that back to back to back, <laughs> now Angel's cup is empty. Now she's pissed. And now she, like, I could always tell when she was at that moment. Because, like, she's going to come in. She's not going to call me. She's going to come in. She's going to be silent. And she's going to come and she's going to look at me and she's going to be like, what's wrong? 
<laughs> What's wrong with me? Nothing's wrong with me. And I say it with a smile because genuinely nothing's wrong with me. And she's like, uh. Oh. <laughs> and I'm like, all right. And I was naive. I didn't know what was going on, what game she was playing. What she was doing was she was hoping that I would then ask her, like, hey, what's are wrong with you? you? Okay? Yeah. No, you asked me a very direct question. What's wrong with me? I answered that question. Nothing's wrong with me. You're supposed to reciprocate. Is anything wrong with you? Yes. Let me tell you how tired. So I then, like, it would turn into, like, I want just time. And I'm like, all right, let's spend time. So then we'll watch, you know, a movie or we'll do something that technically, like, we had determined in our relationship. This is time. This is quality time. But that's not all. That's not what she really wants. She wants words of affirmation. She wants quality time. Like, she now she's, she's behind the eight ball, so she needs it all. Right. So it's like, now I'm like, and I'm not a very lovey-dovey person. That's just, it's not my personality. Um, and asking me, that's why I can't play from behind the eight ball because like I, me, I can only give you so much. I know what I can give you. I'm going to tell you what I can give you. And I'm going to give you that. And like, after that, it's on you fam. Like, so an angel at this point in her life was really not looking at like, she didn't know how to fill her own love tank. And, like, I think mm -hmm. what you were also doing was seeing me fill my love tank, and that was not helping. Well, I think that it was more so, like, so you guys have to understand that when me and Gabriel made, like, super serious decisions, I moved from California to Arizona. He was already in Arizona by himself for, at that point, I think, four years, four or five years. So he has developed a routine for himself. When I lived in California, I did live on my own, like, for three years, and then I ended up having a roommate because I wanted to get back into school. I needed a budget. Um, but I still, like, was, like, out of my parents' house and all that stuff for a few years. Um, so I knew what made me happy, but moving kind of was, like, I got rid of everything that was my normal. So I had yet to find what was, like, my routine. And I learned that Gabriel didn't really have to make the huge adjustment that I did. So his routine, did you? You went from Tucson to Phoenix. But, I mean, you no, didn't like, have... Okay, so this is the thing. You, that was my first time. I was that far from my family. That's what I mean. Not saying you... But you already had a routine. You've been far from your family for but years. This, okay, been, but yeah. But I had also... I have been living on my own for... Five, eight, oh. Seven, eight years. Yeah. Well, what's like, wrong? That's okay. okay so you developed a routine. A routine of living on my own. And then all of a sudden, you move in my house. And you move in my space. Oh, my gosh. And but was now, that not agreed upon by both parties? This is true. But you can't discount it and say, oh, you didn't have to adjust at all. Well, okay, I'm sorry. You, you had to adjust, but your adjustment was different than mine. Yeah. Okay. So, your adjustment was different than mine. So, my adjustment... At that time, a comp it was more than just like I'm moving in with my boyfriend. It was, I'm this far, I've never been this far away from my family. I've never not had a schedule where I don't like me and my family are close. We would have Sunday dinners every Sunday. Like that's just how we were. So to know that like I just took out a huge part of what I am and who I am and I'm here and I'm like, okay, now I'm in nursing school. Nursing school is a beast in itself. And then... You know, I got this boyfriend who I really love and I want to make it work and I'm his caregiver and that's a new role for me. Um, so it was just a lot. And so I just, instead of learning, I didn't know how to fill up my own tank. Like I agree. And yeah, watching, no, 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 it's funny. I didn't know how to fill up my own tank and then watching you, that's why I said you have a routine in the sense of you know how to fill up your own tank. Me, I'm a very, like, I thrive off of other people. I love being around other people. I love being around family. And so it was just new. It was just me. Like, I didn't know anybody. I knew Gabriel. And that's why I was going to Gabriel for everything. And then I learned, not as quickly as I should, but I learned that Gabriel is definitely not the type to, I can't go to you forever. You cannot, you will never be my everything. I don't know. Yeah, I think and I think good. that's huge in marriage because you, you hear all these stories about, oh, he's my everything, he's my best 
best friend. He's my confidant. He's my this. He's my that. I tell him about everything. Yeah. Granted, yes, I do tell Gabriel and everything. And I know that me and him have like a really dope like friendship, a really great relationship, all of that. It's, it's we're pretty dope. But it's the simple fact of I had to realize that I had to categorize what I can put on you and then also realize, okay, Angie, you still, even though your friends aren't physically there, you can still hit them up. You can still call. You can still FaceTime. You can still, and so then I tried to incorporate more calling and FaceTime my friends and then just talking about the stuff that I know this is overwhelming you. And so that's what I had to start doing. And then that's when I started, so to start, blah, 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 slowly started to feel like, Okay, like I started being able to fill in my tank without so, you because I'm like, oh, like talking to my friends and then they build me up words like, oh my gosh, you're so great for leaving and doing this and you're in school still and you're this and you're doing great and blah, blah, blah. And it's everything that I need to hear. And you probably told me all the same things and it didn't fill oh, the void that still, others. No, you still, you still harp at me for that because I'll tell you something. Because you don't say it with lovey dovey, you just say stuff so stoic, and it's just like I'd be like, yo, that's dope. Yo, that's dope. That's exactly how I say it. Like that's the exact tone. I love like, yo, that's super dope. That's super dope. That's how I know it's like yo, I'm proud of you. If I say I'm proud of you, yeah, you don't say I'm proud of you often to me though. That's not that's not like an everyday type thing. It should be. Yeah. It no, should be. It's not. You should have like certain phrases that when you say it, it hits exactly. a person like. Yeah, like, oh, last week when you thing. texted you were proud of me when I was at work. <sighs> but this is the thing. No. Like, I'll, I'll hit you like, with it. And like, then I was like, I'm about to cry. I was like, oh, my God, he told me that he's proud of me. <laughs> Maybe. So, hold on. I'll actually, you know, I want to forget. I was going to ask you a question. So, how did you, what was your process of learning how to fill your own tank, your own love? That took a lot. So, it took some counseling, some therapy. Um, to just learn the kind of person that I am and what it is that I do need to fill in my tank. Because some, you know, it could be null and void if you're doing something like, and you're just, so I had to figure out what it was. Because I used to do, remember I used to buy clothes? That was like a bad habit of mine. I would just, we do something, I buy clothes because I felt like it felt, it felt, it was an instant gratification. But then that was it once I wore it. Um, so then I started to, look into okay what can I do to literally make me happy and so then I got into coloring remember when I first like I was literally like praying like I need something that can like keep me occupied but allows me to not think too much but think enough and be intentional and coloring for me was super therapeutic um so I just literally stocked up on coloring books I love vision boards so then I started to realize I'm a very creative person which is really weird. Why would I not know that? But I literally started to just like um, take nothing and make it into something like really weird. I really enjoy building things. I don't know if it's something to do with my dad and like when we used to build stuff together, but like when we get stuff from Amazon or whatever the case may be, I'm like, ooh, ooh, and I get super excited and I build it. It really fills my tank. I don't know why. It just does. And so I'm learning. I'm just, I think, to fill my tank for me, yes, nail salon is great. Getting your hair done is great. I've learned that I actually hate the nail salon. Like, I get there and I get anxiety. Because I'm just like, I just want to be done. I want to be done. Why am I still here? Why am I sitting here? I don't, it's not therapeutic for me at all. So that's what I'm going to exit that out the punch. It's not, that's not, that's not my self-care. So my self-care was such a process because you just have to learn yourself. You have to try do a trial and error figure out what's works for you because i don't think anything works for the same person mm. yeah so it was a process i mean like i said i don't i don't really know exactly what clicked but the creative side well take that back in high school i used to scrapbook weird don't judge me but like <laughs> i had to take pictures and then get them printed and then i would like scrapbook like for no reason at all. Like there was no real purpose behind it, but I have scrapbooks at my mom's house of just like friends, life, cheerleading, homecoming. <laughs> so I think I've always had a creative side to me. I just never realized that that was my self-care. Yeah. Um, and so now 
it's even migrated into like getting creative with like my skincare routine. Like, why not use it to, you know, make yourself look good? So now like I really enjoy doing skincare every morning and every night. And you you be like, you need to speed. Yo, you up. really do. That makes so much sense. <laughs> I be sitting here at night like, bruh, either shut the door to the it bathroom is so, or hurry it up. That, but you got to think that's my two times a day that it is about me. It is about me. Like, it's not and about anyone else. Okay, I'm not thinking about the spices just need to go I'm eat. totally fine huh? with this. I'm glad that's your time. Can you shut the door when you do it, though? Yeah. Okay. Does it bother you? Yeah. The light be on. I'll be ready for the light to turn off in the bedroom. I'll be ready to quiet down. Okay. You be out here. I'll be out. Yeah. Yeah. That's dope, though. Yeah. So that's like, and then I think in doing that, knowing I have those two, even if it's twenty minutes in the morning, twenty that's minutes in the evening. When you get clean, go wash your face. Go wash your face. <laughs> go wash your face. someone else into uh, a place you have given them power to shift the atmosphere right even if like you didn't tell them like, hey you can decide like no like just you being in this room you can have an attitude and you can fit it. right so just having someone in your presence can it is giving them the power to shift the atmosphere right so like me, so you enjoy I enjoy solo. having 100% of the power 
to say, yo, I want to be in a hype mood. I want to be in like a, a giddy mood. I want to be in a laughing mood. Like I would literally just laugh by myself. Like, and I enjoy it. It's the best laugh. That's good though. I know. But you didn't see that at first. No. Because it didn't come off like that to me. But I said, I get it. Mm -hmm. I completely get it. Um, but I think that segues into a big announcement for y'all about why, um, we've been kind of, not MIA, but we promised y'all consistency, we're going to get it. But the end of January to about all of February, <laughs> we it's been a big transition phase and, um, I just want to see Say that I appreciate y'all for sticking around and checking on us and you know tuning in when we post out our wedding video our wedding footage. You gonna tell us? I don't know, I'm afraid to. So, alright, I wanna tell y'all. Haven't told anyone but like close family and friends, and that's it. And I've been very hesitant, and I think another part, I don't know if this is necessarily self-care, but it's more of a self-preservation. A big part of me doesn't like sharing things that haven't happened because I never want anyone to come into seeing what I'm doing and then trying to tame it in any way and wishing ill upon me. I don't know. I've always just been like, don't say anything. But a big part of me is like, I need to share this with the world because people need to know. I think this is going to be a great conversation for a lot of people. So I have actually transitioned. I am a NICU nurse. I was working here in Phoenix. This is where we live. Um, but I'm transitioning into travel nursing and I actually am going to be taking like 12 to 13 week assignments in other parts of the country. Um, and so, yeah, I am nervous. <coughs> I'm excited. I think that it was the best fit for me and Gabriel and our relationship because Gabriel loves to go back, not loves, but with his lifestyle he goes back and forth between here and his hometown and so it leaves me here a lot alone <laughs> which i don't mind but i'm like we don't have any kids we're just at a not at a weird phase but we're just at this in between i phase think we're of, at a point where it's like if we're going to do some radical stuff especially to put ourselves ahead now, now is the time. the time to do it yeah absolutely so this is my radical move, y'all. This is my my groundbreaking, shape shifting move. I'm excited, but it just gives me the freedom also to be able to be there for Gabriel. We can take vacations together. I don't have to worry about like one specific job and will they give me PTO and blah blah blah. It really puts my life and my career in my hands, and to me that was the most ideal thing. Granted, the money's amazing, but like besides the money, because everyone goes to child nursing for money. Yes, the money is great. Outside of that, what else are you doing it for? I'm doing it because I think that it's going to be a transition that's needed for our relationship and um, our lifestyle. And I think that the flexibility of being able to go anywhere in the country, I don't say in the world, but anywhere in the country and travel as a nurse is going to hone in on my skills. I'm going to get better at my skill sets. It's going to allow me to never get bored. And that's the thing I've learned. Gabriel actually told me the other, like a month ago, he was like, you, because after about a year of working at one job, I always go catty a new job. And he looks at me like, who jumps you know, around you like that? I need a new job. This is the thing about you. You <laughs> will say, you'll wait until one person does one thing that you do not like. No. I will not be here no more. I will not be here no more. I'm, I'm gone. Yeah, I mean, like and the job I that I was working at year? was like they're going through a huge transition because they like changed the name of the hospital, so they're changing a lot of the policies and procedures. It was just a lot, and it just was not rubbing me the right way. And I love them, and you know, down the line, who's to say I might be back? But um, yeah, no, I'm really just I just I'm I'm more so of a like. I love a work-life balance. And if you're not going to give me what I'm looking for, I'm not asking for much. When I'm there, I'm showing up and I'm showing up for you and the babies, you know? 
So it's like the least you could do is give me the work life balance, the life balance part. And if you're not gonna give it to me, bet I'll find another place that will go. And so I think this is real amazing because like with child nursing, you could take an assignment and then you could be off for a month and you know, nurture whoever you home, travel. It will I'm super excited for you, super proud. Um Thank you. I think that we will be able to put into like over the last probably year, yeah, I would say two years, we've mastered taking care of like we've we have taken the life course of like mastering how to self care each other and ourselves. Yeah. So for instance, like I've learned, okay. I've, I've seen Angel grow into the area of this is how I self-care myself. I come, do X, Y, and Z. And then I have said, okay, this is the telltale signs of she's getting low. Let's fill her up. Like, she has been nervous for this the last two months. I've never bought as many flowers <laughs> as I have ever bought in the last two months. And you didn't buy any on Valentine's Day. No, I didn't. <laughs> but, I didn't. There but we go. Like, <laughs> like literally, there had been consistent flowers in this house. Just because I need her to continue to see life. And when she looks at flowers, she sees right. life. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, I have to. Because if I don't, then I'm going to hear it from her on the other side. And I'm not trying to deal with that. So, like, learning how to do that um, was key for me. I think. It will be, this first assignment will definitely be a test to say, like, all right, how how can we put what we have practiced into, like, our everyday, we're not in each other's face. Right. And I think for me, that's probably going to be, like I said, I enjoy waking up to you every morning. Like, I legit. I'm a pretty handsome guy. You are pretty awesome. <laughs> And so having to know that I'm going to be waking up and it may be to you a should FaceTime. Put my, you should put my picture on, on the pillow. pillow. I actually thought about getting a body pillow and doing that and like cuddling with it at night. You're such a weirdo. Spoon it. Like, you know. Just <laughs> <laughs> You're so weird. <laughs> but, I, yeah, I think that we're going about it a very, our intentions are very pure. And I think that because of that, it's going to really allow us to project into an amazing, amazing situation down the line whenever it's said and done. Like, I don't know what's to come out of this as far as like when it ends. Like, I don't have an expiration date. I don't have, you know, we're just kind of going to go with the flow. We'll yeah. see. And I think that's what, you know, sometimes people don't like. But, like, I tell them, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Right. That's where success that's is born. That's success, and that's where, yeah, and that's where excellence is made. Yeah, like, so. you got to get comfortable with it. And, like, it'll be sacrifice now for the pleasure later. Right. So, you got it. But we got it. But I'm glad, like, because this is the thing. It's so crazy. Think about, like, we have literally perfected almost like the art of right. self care. Yeah. Right at the moment of us both being apart from each other. Like things happen for a reason. So. Yeah. I think it's a lot of growth that needs to happen. Like you said. <laughs> it's, it, I don't know. I don't know what, like, I think it's like, that's what makes me so nervous. I'm like, it's, it's a lot of unknown. Yeah. And I think that's probably for me the part of like, oh, all right, Angel. Well, it is what it is. You already signed your contract, so, so not like, here. But yeah. I, one thing that I will say that kind of made me not nervous, but just added to it was the fact of like, I know how good I know Gabriel's gonna enjoy this with one guy. I know, like I know I'm gonna enjoy it too. Like I packed my coloring books, I packed all my skincare. So I know I'm gonna be good. But I'm like, hey, why are you gonna, gonna be, be a mad? different kind of good? Why are you gonna be mad at my happiness? 
Let my happiness be just happy. Because Gabriel me. enjoys being alone so much. Like there are times that I have like walked in a room and he's not looking at me like. Oh, I was. Yeah. Like, why are, why are, you, are you in here? Why are you here? <laughs> why are you in here? And I was like, these rooms. Uh, I was just coming room. to grab something. Grab it and go. Grab it and go. Close the door behind Don't you. Don't linger. Don't. Shut Close. the door. Close the door. What are you doing? Why are you back? Don't come back. Don't come back. You know, you always. And then if back. I come back like two or three times, you know what? I'm gonna just go to the other room. I'm gonna just go to the other room. You can have it. <laughs> it don't even feel the same no more. You have ruined the energy. It was perfect. And the thing is, like my energy don't need to be bad. I can walk in the No, smiling. it just be the energy of you here. Like, I no. Know. I don't want maybe this, okay, exactly what I said earlier. Like <laughs> I can set the energy of where I had it. Maybe I didn't have the energy of happy, smiley, go lucky. Cheesy looking face. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. That's why I'm leaving the room. Like, I gotta go set the energy somewhere else. Don't follow me. <laughs> Don't follow. And what do I do? Follow. <laughs> so you do that on purpose. No, I don't do that on purpose. You do. I don't. God knows why it doesn't. I don't. Keep that same energy. <laughs> Stop. I tell, like every time I tell her that now she gonna be terrified. I, I hit her phone for like forty five minutes last night. It was hilarious. Cause we were playing and then we ended. What happened? We were joking around all day. Like oh, he we was hitting. Joking. We were we pillow were fighting all day. We no, who pillow fight? Who who started pillow fight? I don't remember. Exactly. I know I ended it though. <laughs> you started and then ended it. Whatever. But anyways, so all right, so, yeah, last, so last last note to leave them on. Last note. What to is more. your what is the like if you gave them two steps or a step to like finding like their like self care, mm -hmm. like what would you tell people? Um, it's from like a caregiver role. Yeah. Set aside from anything that your husband or partner has that makes you happy, because of course you make me happy. I would say um, finding space and creating space because that might be the thing it may not even be that you it may be that you don't know how to do self-care but at the same time are you creating a space to to get that you know are you saying okay baby for 30 minutes every friday 5 to 5 30 i'm gonna do this this and this if you're not being intentional about the time it may slip up on you and then three months go by and you have any time for yourself so I think be intentional about your time mm -hmm. and then in that time, create an atmosphere to just understand that you may not know you as well as you think you do. And that's okay, but this is the time to get to know you. Um, and then getting to know yourself, you you know, like I turn off all distractions. Like I don't, I don't look at my phone. I don't watch TV. I may put music on because I really, music is just like me. I love music. So I could put on music, I could do whatever I, you know, and I literally just pray and find my best self and I go from there. So but I think the biggest thing is being intentional about making sure you have the time for self-care. Cool. What about you? What's my tip for self-care? I know you're not. Self-care? Yeah. Oh. For just from a quadriplegic standpoint, because maybe you got, not maybe, I feel like you guys feel smothered by caregivers. And so I think it's important for you guys as well to be intent. That once I, th I don't know, I don't know why the intentionality of time seems like the biggest takeaway from both. But I don't know. You're the quad, so you tell me. So like I am, I love. I'm a huge proponent of saying what you mean and meaning what you say. Mm -hmm. So like even if it's gonna hurt your feelings, I'm going to tell you this because if I'm thinking ahead. I'm going to hurt your feelings because I'm hurting inside because I'm not getting what I want or what I need. Right. So if I need space and I say, hey, I need you to leave. I need space. That might hurt your feelings in the moment. Mm -hmm. Eventually, you can come back. We can have a conversation about maybe how I said it mm -hmm. and like how I delivered it and how mm -hmm. it made you feel. But at the same time, like you were going to get hurt either way because if you would have kept smothering me, I was either going to snap at you, it was going to be something like what you were doing was never going to be good enough because it's not what I want. Like, 
something was going to happen, right? So I am a person that tells people like what you need. Yo, I need space. Like that's and I get it all the time. I get it from my family, I get it from friends, I get it from loved ones, like everybody. Everybody comes to me like, yo, Gabriel, like you be so like to yourself, you be so lonely, like you'll never be around, you'll be present, blah blah blah. But like if I'm not happy, mm-hmm. I can't make y'all happy. Right. So like if you call me or text me during me time, right. I'm not gonna like even my clients, like I I have sets time aside. Yeah. I will call you back after that me time. Yeah. So like I agree, like you have to be intentional about your time. But I feel like you also have to be intentional about what you want. For me, it's space. Okay. Like just alone. Yeah. Like or time with Isis. Like, cause she doesn't talk. She doesn't really bring energy to an area. She matches your energy. But like, outside of that, I'd be just give me that. I'm sure. Play my video game. Don't talk to me. So tell them what you want. If you're a weirdo that like the color, tell them. No, I she, gotta be the weirdo. She, 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 I'm like, she be sitting behind me, just come like, girl, you, you color in the back of my head. What you doing? I do, and I enjoy it. And I'll be so quiet, and he's like, you good? I'm good. All right. And then he go back to his video game, I go back to my color, and then life is good. Yeah. All right. Well, I hope this helps you guys. Until next time. Until next time, make sure you guys follow us on, follow us on Instagram, all platforms. Yeah, Facebook, Twitter, Push, push to, to Love. So the number two. Number two. Love. Push to Love. I can't do the. Oh, I can do like You can two. do the two. There you go. You got it. Cloud hands, you It's like that. Push to Love. I hope it. I can't even see what it looks like. We'll see. <laughs> all right, y'all. Till next time. All right, bye.